right, yo, what's going on, YouTube? It is your boy Q, and we're finally back again with another video. We're just gonna keep this intro short and sweet. Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to sound like Can Can. I'm gonna show you how to make a beat. So we're gonna go over that project file, break down everything in there. And I'm gonna show you how I brought that beat into another FL Studio project and put some vocals behind it to sound like Can Can. So basically, when I was making this, my goal here was to sound like this. So if you listen to the intro, you can kind of get an idea for what I was going for. But anyways, before we do jump into the video, if you guys could do me a favor, follow me on Instagram. And if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And also in this video, I do drop a new preset. It is the Can Can preset. So if you head over to my website and click that vocal templates section, it'll be the first one. Or you can just click the link down in the bio below or the pinned comment. And the cool part about this is it is 100% stock. So if you have FL Studio, you'll be able to open this perfectly. And yeah, that's basically it. So without any further ado, let's jump into the actual video. All right, so here is the beat file. And basically what I did when I first started this, uh, I wanted to stay around 140. So I just brought it down two to 138. And I immediately jumped into Serum and I picked out this pad from my cyber bank called Frozen. I know a lot of you guys already have this bank. If you don't have it, I'm telling you, you should go grab it. It's one of my one of my favorite multi kits I've ever dropped, but I am currently working on a new one for you guys that are looking for something new. So stay tuned for that. But like I said, I picked that pad called Frozen, and it basically sounds like this. And if you don't know this trick in FL Studio, if you go to the view section, scale highlighting, you could actually set a scale, and FL Studio will highlight the notes in the piano roll. So I set it to D sharp natural minor. Basically, what this does here is it blacks out all the notes that are not in the D sharp minor natural scale. So we have this as our scale right here. So that's our D sharp natural minor scale. And the other notes are just blacked out. And what I did to start out this melody is I basically made a simple triad. So if you were to make a triad, basically you'd start at your root note or realistically any note, but skip one note in the scale. So that'd be the F note right here. And we'd go to the F sharp, skip another note in the scale and go to our A sharp. And you could even continue doing this to make a fourth. But I just made a simple triad. And basically what I did in this one is if you listen to the actual triad we just made, it sounds like this. But what I did was bring this middle note down just a single semitone. It's called flattening the note. And it basically makes the triad just sound a bit more eerie and kind of darker. So now you get this. And then I just added those two transition notes. And then for this next note, I kind of just placed notes randomly until I found something. As you can see, it's a B, F sharp, and another B, and another F sharp here. So there's really no actual triad or anything, but this is just what sounded good. So I'll just play the rest of the chord progression for you guys. And that just repeats over a few times. And then I basically went and found another sound in Serum. I found this pad right here called 2000, which is also from Cyber. And that one sounds like this. So this kind of just adds a little bit more energy. And I use this as a transition between every eight bars. I would take it in and out. As you can see, it's this one right here. And this alone sounds like this. Yeah, and then the next part we did, we hopped up into Serum again. When I make beats like this, I pretty much use all the Serum. It's like all I'm using the whole time. And I found this pluck called Diamond. Of course, it's from Cyber. It sounds like this. I just super simple pluck and I played this little melody right here. And I think I did add, yeah, I added a Valhalla Vintage Verb and a Valhalla Delay just to add some ambience. The last thing I added was actually a bell. And if you guys have Cyber, you already know about this, but there is a secret sound in there. If you head over to the keys folder in the one shot kit, there is a bell that sounds like this. And all I did was just play the root note of that bell. And as you can see, it just plays every two bars. So if you play everything together, you have the full melody, which sounds like this. Then of course we had to move on to the drums and I used my cyber drum kit, of course. And we started out with a super simple clap. Just your basic clap pattern. Then we move into the hi-hat. And 
Then we add some snares and open hats. So yeah, just a little simple bounce right here. It, and then if you guys have been making yeet beats and you have the cyber kit, you know about this 808. It's a super popular 808 right now. It's pretty much used in like goddamn every yeet beat. It just sounds good, but it sounds like this. It's just pretty little dirty 808, but I laid down this pattern. And all the drums together, you get that perfect bounce. Then if we add that melody in, you get the full beat right here. And for the whole beat, I'm pretty sure yeah, the drums don't come out at all except for the outro. All I did was just mess with what I had the main melody sounding like, so... There's parts where it's just one part of the melody and then everything comes in. We drop the bell a few times, but it's just variation, which is key. Like I said, the drums never come out. So let me close this project and we'll pull up the actual vocal file. All right, so here is what the actual project itself looks like. And as you can tell, this probably looks a lot different from your normal FL Studio. Whenever I lay down vocals, I always use my vocal mixing template. The reason I even made this is because I came from Pro Tools and FL is a lot different from Pro Tools, so I tried to make this template is similar as I can to Pro Tools. The reason for that is because in FL, you could link these tracks right here to your mixer tracks. So for example, as you can see, this is routed to mixer track one, which is the main vocal. But say I were to bring this down from main vocal to ad libs. As you can see, if I bring it down, it'll change where it's routed. So now it's routed to mixer track two, which is the ad lib track. If we bring it back up, see it's not routed to one. In this video, I know a lot of you guys wanted me to actually break down the chain itself. So of course I do encourage you to actually buy the template just because it helps support me and I mean it's also a lot easier to just use but I am going to be showing you guys how to use that. But anyways let's actually get into it. So here is the main vocal and as you can see uh, we started out with autotune but if you do not have autotune you could just click this button right here go to replace and use the FL Studio autotune. But I basically started out with an EQ and as you can see I basically flattened out these low mids and I brought all this low end out and brought these highs up. Basically with this first EQ what I was doing my goal was to shape the vocal how I think can can sounds and of course we had to go into a compressor so I brought up the fruity compressor we brought the threshold down to meet where my mic was sitting so I actually turned my mic down a lot for this I had it very low because as you can see the threshold on this is minus 40.5 which is a pretty low threshold I brought my ratio to four to one I brought the gain up a little bit we have the compression type on hard and the attack and release I actually didn't adjust too much I think I just messed with the attack a little bit but this was just my first compressor meant to be like pretty smooth and then we moved into a fruity multi-band compressor and this does a majority of the work so yeah, this is doing a majority of the work so I'll play it for you guys real quick so you can see what's going on here <laughs> So if you don't know what's going on, basically uh, the red is showing you the amount of compression, how much is actually happening, and the in is just what is actually coming into the compressor. So if you were watching closely, you could see the majority of the work is done in the high band, and that's what we want because we want that high end to really pop out. But I am compressing everything a little bit, and I'm not going to go over all these knobs because it's a lot, but this is the fruity multiband compressor. Then we go into a sound geyser, which also does a lot. Basically what the sound geyser is, it's a compressor, and I believe there's a little bit of distortion with it. I'm not too sure, but I used the A preset, and we have this a little bit more than like 15%. And we go into a fruity limiter, and we're just using and we're just using the compression right here. And this is much more of an aggressive compression. We have the attack pretty fast and the release a little bit more slow. Didn't really mess with the sustain knob, but we have the threshold right here. And I adjusted the knee, which is basically just how hard it clips that. And we have a ratio set at 1.6 to 1. And this is what the compressor is actually doing. It'll show you in this graph. Then we go into a Maximus. This is just our de -esser. It is just on the narrow band de -esser. And as you can see, I have this orange section right here, which is the actual de -essing just brought down a little bit. Then we have another EQ just to bring out any of those lows that were kind of cutting through the mix. And as far as that goes, that's pretty much it. I just added this reverb because in my opinion, Can Can usually has pretty dry vocals. They're not too drenched in reverb. And then for the ad lib, everything's the same. I just messed with this EQ right here. 
which is a post EQ, so it goes after all of these plugins. And I brought some of the low end out and brought the high end up a little bit. And then we have more reverb. And I also put on a and I put on a fruity stereo shaper. And we are using the stereoize preset. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, all of these are the main vocal tracks that I recorded. As you can see, I was just punching in and out. And basically what I did here was if you're using my template, I'll mute this, but if we record something, for example, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we have to enable this. So in the new FL Studio, this is so nice for recording. So I have my record track right here, which is actually this track right here, completely dry. I just hit this enable button. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a little test. And then if we take recording off, and all you have to do is literally drag this down. And now it's routed to mix track one, which is our main vocal. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, literally as simple as that. That's why I really like using this recording template. It just makes everything so easy. And then with the new FL, if you wanted to hear yourself, you just click this button right in the middle. And there's this monitor external input. And you can just turn it on. And now you can hear yourself. Yeah. But yeah, as far as the recording goes and the actual templates, that's what it sounds like. So there's nothing more to do than show you guys what the actual sound sounds like. So uh, sit back, relax, and let me know what you think of the song. Deuces. <laughs>